CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine's Abdominal and Pelvic Imaging, CT, MR, US. This excerpt is from course director, Dr. Lena Poder's lecture titled, Imaging of Acute Pelvic Pain. Now moving on to um, other etiologies that somewhat emergencies of the uh, female pelvis, that's ovarian torsion. And um, it's 2.7% of gynecologic operative emergencies. And it's most common in women of reproductive age, and 20% uh, of them occurs in pregnancy. And apparently right side is more common because the sigmoid colon, the way it's located, is supposed to protect the left side. And occasionally there is a lead point, such as the variant mass uh, dermoids, that being most common, but sometimes just in younger uh, reproductive age patients, the follicles and physiologic cysts uh, will, can lead to torsion. So however, the ovarian torsion may present at any time in female life from childhood to postmenopausal period. So this is actually one of the cases where we actually do rely very heavily on clinical symptoms. They are acute, severe unilateral pain, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and intermittent pa pain may precede acute symptoms because there is, of course, the torsion could be intermittent. Unfortunately, though, the symptoms can be mimicked by other pelvic processes because when you look at those symptoms, appendicitis and other inflammatory processes can have very similar uh, symptoms. So what are we looking for in imaging? The torsed ovary has to be enlarged. It has to be greater than four centimeters, but that's just a number. But generally, what I like to do is just to compare it to the other side. It is greater, it's bigger in size than the other ovary. And the very typical appearance is when the follicles are pushed to the periphery. And um, so you have edema in the central stroma and sometimes hemorrhage into the ovarian stroma. Oftentimes you have associated free fluid in a pelvis, but it's not, again, very specific as young women often have free fluid in a pelvis. And then there's something which is called the twisted vascular pedicle or the whirlpool sign or a target sign. It's very specific, but on ultrasound especially, I'll show you images, but once you see it, it's great, but the sign is very difficult to see most of the time. Doppler, that is what we often talk about, but it kind of has limited value because if you see your findings and in unilateral enlarged ovary, follicles pushed to the periphery and the patient has symptoms, but you see Doppler flow, doesn't mean the woman doesn't have torsion. It might have an intermittent torsion or it might have partially torsed. So the, if you have no presence of flow, it's not that helpful. If you don't have flow, of course, it is helpful. So here is one of the uh, examples of an enlarged ovary. Of course, always compare it to the other side to make sure, because young women oftentimes have quite prominent ovaries. And in this case, it has a typical appearance. There's some dominant follicles in the middle, and the other ones are pushed to the periphery and the damages stroma. Same thing here, and you can actually see the follicles pushed to the periphery, echogenic edematous stroma, and there's no flow detected inside the uh, stroma or the parenchyma of the ovary. And this is the appearance of the target sign or the whirlpool or torsion when it's actually the nexa, the fallopian tube and the vessels which are twisted. And um, when you see it, as I said, it's great and they also look that they're edematous at the same time. That's why we can see it so well. But again, it's not always easy to see, especially on ultrasound. And sometimes if we do cross-sectional imaging for diagnosing torsion. It's very rare, but if some of the indications would be young women or children or pediatric patients when we cannot do the endovaginal ultrasound and we can't really measure the flow or see things very well. This is one of the indications when MRI can be very helpful because it's critical whether to take the patient to the operating room or not or then also patient, elderly patients and patients with difficult body habitus, obese patients, where we cannot really see the ovaries well. But it's just very similar findings. What we would see on ultrasound is the one ovary is enlarged, follicles pushed to the periphery. And here is the, I put it as a comparison, the uh, whirlpool sign on the ultrasound is actually much better seen and in literature reported as well. You could see the twisting of the pedicle very well on the, these coronal images here. 
and of course also helps you to see the other ovary, which is normal, and then demonstrates that there is absolutely no perfusion of this ovary on the post-contrast images. Top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com 763V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.